make haste, therefore, and depart upon thine errand. Yet, because thou art come into the world a grown man, having neither father nor mother nor inheritance, I will give thee what is most necessary for thy journey. Then the angel took a handful of leaves from a gata bush close by and gave them to Khalid. And as he gave them, they were changed into a rich garment and into linen and into a shawl with which to make a turban and shoes of red leather. Clothe thyself with these, said the angel. He broke a twig from the bush and placed it in Khalid's hand. Immediately, it became a saber of Damascus steel and a sheath of leather with a belt. Take the sword, which is of such fine temper that it will cleave through an iron headpiece and a shirt of mail. But remember that it is not a sword made by magic. Let thy magic reside in thy arm. Wield it for the faith, and put thy trust in Allah. Afterwards, the angel took up a locust that was asleep on the sand, waiting for the warmth of the morning sun. The angel held the locust up before Khalid, and then let it fall. But as it fell, it became at once a beautiful bay mare with round black eyes wide apart and an arching tail which swept down to the sand like a river of silk. Take this mare, said the angel. She is of the pure breed of Najed, and as swift as the wind, but mortal like thyself. But how shall I ride her without saddle or bridle? asked Khalid. That is true, answered the angel. He laid leaves of the gata upon the mare's back, and they became a saddle, and placed a twig in her mouth, and it turned into a bit and a bridle. Khalid thanked the angel and mounted. Farewell and prosper, and put thy trust in Allah, and forget not the day of judgment, the angel said, and immediately returned to paradise. So Khalid was left alone in the Red Desert, a living man obliged to shift for himself, liable to suffer hunger and thirst, or to be slain by robbers, with no worldly possessions but his sword, his bay mare, and the clothes on his back. He knew, moreover, that he was more than two hundred miles from the city of Riyadh, and he knew that he could not accomplish this journey in less than four days. For, when he was one of the genii, he had often watched men toiling through desert on foot and on camels and on horses, and had laughed with his companions at the slow progress they made. But now it was no laughing matter, for he had forgotten to ask the angel for dates and water or even for a few handfuls of barley meal. He turned the mare's head westward of the goat, in which is the polar star, for he remembered that when he had carried away the Indian prince, he had flown towards the southeast, and as he began to gallop over the dark sand, he laughed to himself. What poor things are men and their horses, he said, to destroy me. This mare need only stumble and lame herself, and we shall both die of hunger and thirst in the desert. This reflection made him at first urge the mare to her greatest speed, for he thought that the sooner he should be out of the desert and among the villages beyond, the present danger would be past. But presently he bethought him that the mare would be more likely to stumble and hurt herself in the dark if she were galloping than if she were moving at a moderate pace. He therefore drew bridle and patted her neck and made her walk slowly and cautiously forward. But this did not please him either, 
after a time, for he remembered that if he rode too slowly, he must die of hunger before reaching the end of his journey. Truly, he said, one must learn what it is to be a man in order to understand the uses of moderation. Gallop not, lest thy horse fall and thy perish, nor delay walking slowly by the road, lest thou die of thirst and hunger. Yet thou art not safe, for Awalid died from treading upon an arrow, and Oda ibn Qais perished by perpetual sneezing. Allah is just and merciful. I will let the mare go at her own pace, for the end of all things is known. The mare, being left to herself, began to canter, and carried Khalid onward all night without changing her gait. Nevertheless, thought Khalid, if we are not soon out of the desert, we shall suffer thirst during the day as well as hunger. When there was enough daylight to distinguish a black thread from a white, Khalid looked before him and saw that there was nothing but red sand in hillocks and ridges with gada bushes here and there. But still the mare cantered on and did not seem tired. Soon, the sun rose and it grew very hot, but the air was quite still and it was summertime. Khalid looked always before him, and at last he saw a white patch in the distance, and he knew that there must be water near it, for the water of the red desert whitens the sand. He therefore rode on cheerfully, for he was now thirsty, and the mare quickened her pace for she also knew that she was near a drinking place. But, as they came close to the spot, Khalid remembered that the preceding night had been al Qadir, which falls between the seventh and eighth latter days of the month Ramadan, during which the true believers neither eat nor drink, so long as there is light enough to distinguish a white thread from a black one. So, when they reached the well, he let his mare drink her fill, and he took off the saddle and bridle and let her loose, after which he sat down with his head in the shade of a gada bush to rest himself. Allah is merciful, he said. The night will come, and then I will drink, for he dared not ride farther for fear of not finding water again. Then again he was disturbed, for he had nothing to eat, and he thought that if he waited until night, he would be hungry as well as thirsty. But presently he saw the mare trying to catch the locust that flew about. She could only catch one or two, because it was now hot, and they were able to fly quickly. When the night comes, he said, the locust will lie on the ground and cling to the bushes, being stiff with the cold, and then I will eat my fill and drink also. Soon afterwards he fell asleep, being weary, and when he awoke it was night again, and the stars shone overhead. Khalid rose hastily and drank at the well, and made ablutions and prayed, prostrating himself towards the Qibla. He remembered that he had slept a long time and that he had not performed his devotions for a day and a night, so that he repeated them five times to atone for the omission. The mare was eating the locust that now lay in great black patches on the sand unable to move and save themselves. Khalid threw his cloak over a great number of them and gathered them together. Then he kindled a fire of Gara by striking sparks from the blade of his sword, and when he had made a bed of coals, he roasted the locust after pulling off their legs and ate his fill. While he was doing this, he was much disturbed in mind. I have only just begun to live as a man, he thought. 
did I not stand ten months and thirteen days in the third heaven, unconscious of the passing of time? Who shall tell me whether I have not slept another ten months or more under this bush, like the companions of Al-Rakim? So, when he had done eating and had drunk again from the well, and had made the mare drink, he saddled her quickly and mounted, and cantered on through the night, guiding his course by the stars. On the following day he again found a well, but much later than before, and he suffered much from thirst, as he watched his mare dip her black lips into the pool. Nevertheless, he would not break his fast, for he was resolved to be a true believer in practice, as well as in belief. So he fell asleep, and awoke when it was night again, and ate and drank. In this way he journeyed several days, until he began to see the hill country, which borders the desert towards Riyadh, and he understood that he had been much farther away than he had imagined. But he reflected that Allah had doubtless intended to try his constancy, by imposing upon him the journey through the desert during the days of fasting. But, at last, he awoke one day just at sunset instead of sleeping until the night. He had been traveling up the first slopes where the ground, though barren, is harder than in the desert, and had lain down in a hollow by an abundant spring. 